Our next one, now we're going to go up north, straight into the heart of the Midwest, Chagrin Falls, Ohio. Hi, Alan. My name is Andrew. I live in Chagrin Falls, Ohio, which is on the east side of Cleveland. I'm calling. I have a cool season lawn. It's a mixture of all types of cool season grasses, but I'm calling with a direct question about the uh, the next product. I just ordered my first set of the BioStem pack, and I'm wondering if I can place the Air 8, the Humic 12, and the RGS at their recommended application rates directly in a hose end sprayer, mix those three together, and put them out all at once? Or is it better to do each one of those individual? And uh, thanks, Alan, again. Uh, I hope to hear my question on the air. All right, Andrew, this is a great question. And I love this because obviously it talks about products that I sell. And I know a lot of you guys are going to think, oh, man, is he pitching? No. Um, I want you to just think about a little something. This goes back to, and by the way, I don't set these questions up. I mean, I'm glad Andrew asked about the products that we talk about. And obviously, I talk about them a lot because I love them and believe in them. But this is going to go back to this round idea here and thinking a little bit differently. So what he's asking is, hey, can I throw the RGS, the Aerate, and the Humic 12 all into my hose-in sprayer tank and spray that and pray. Yes, you can. You can mix all those together, Andrew, and there's no problem with that. The mix might get a little thick, depending how big of an area you're trying to cover. And also remember, in the hose-in sprayer, if you use the ortho, you only have a 32-ounce tank, so there's only so much you're going to get in there. And the more products you put in, then the less square footage you can cover with that. I'm going to do some more videos coming up on that because I feel like with the hose-in sprayer, I've overly confused it just like I do everything else by making the math really complicated when really if you just read it, you, it's easy to use. But either way, I'm going to do some more videos showing you that and showing you some more options. But Andrew, let's just talk through a little bit logically speaking, with what's in each of those products, and this is where we're, we're going to get out of the idea of a round. But even more than that, even outside of that, let's get out of the idea of a round. Now, if you don't have any other time and you got to put them all down to, together, go ahead and do it. But if you do have more time to start working things by feel, let's just be a little bit more logical and let's think. The RGS has got the sea kelp in there, and that's the, the, the magic to making the root growth and stimulating shoots and things like that. You probably have some Kentucky bluegrass there, so that's going to help thicken up the rhizome base. But it's also got fulvic acid in it and humic acid. And the key there is humic acid. So that's the thing to realize. RGS has that sea kelp. It's got the fulvic acid, but it's 6% humic acid. Now let's look at the air eight. The air eight has a very specialized job. It dives down into the soil. It breaks bonds, so it creates space. And then the thing that else comes with it is, you guessed it, humic acid. And that humic acid is at 8% in that product. And what that does is it fills in that space and adds carbon. That's what the beauty of the aerate is. But the key there is humic acid, 8%. RGS, humic acid, 6%. Aerate, 8%. The next one is then the humic 12, and that is the humic acid product. That's the one that you use when you need that juice, when you need that boost. And it is humic acid, 12%. So if you're putting all of those down together, that's a lot of humic acid. Is that going to hurt your soil? No, it's not. But wouldn't it be more logical to spread them out so the humic acid is also spread out? Instead of juicing it all in there today together like that, hardcore, let's spread it out over a couple of weeks or three or four weeks. Let's do the RGS this weekend and then the aerate the next weekend and the humic 12 the next. Or the aerate first to open up all the space in the soil then the RGS a week later or two weeks later to push roots down in there, and then the Humic 12 three weeks after that to kick up the microbes in a hardcore way. You see how that works? Space those out. Let's get the let's stretch that humic acid out. Let's let's layer it out instead of just putting it all into one big huge stack right now. And we're gonna talk about soil testing a little later too, because some of that thinking comes into soil testing where you think that you have a problem with your soil test and you have to just fix it all in one round. So I'm not saying, Andrew, that you're trying to do all that. I'm just trying to give, you guys know, when I do this, I talk about theory, and sometimes I'll try to guess your situation a little bit, and I hope that you, and I know you guys do, you appreciate the fact that I just want to get you to think a little bit differently. So Andrew, I hope that helps you out there, and I hope that you'll have fun spraying and praying. The other thing that happens too, real quick, when you do spread them out is it forces you to learn your land a little more. It forces you to understand what it looks like by looking at it more, because when you spray, you're definitely more concentrated on it. So that's another reason why. And then of course, separating the applications and spraying more is going to give you more experience. And one thing that we take for granted is that 
once you learn your lawn, you'll have a pattern that you spray. One thing that traditional, that that professionals do is when they get a route, they, they spray the lawns pretty much the same way every time because they just understand how to do hose management, right? There's trees here. I can wrap the hose around that tree and use it as a, as a leverage point. I can go this way. I can avoid the fence here and avoid the swing set over there. I can cut through. There's a certain pattern that you learn at properties. And once you learn it, you want to go for efficiency. So pros, if you watch them, especially customers that they've had for many, many years. And when I worked for True Green, we had a lot of customers that were with us 10 years. We had a lot of customers that were with us 25 customers on the south side of Chicago with us for 70 years or since the 70s and the technicians had been around that long we had specialists that had been spraying lawns 20 25 30 years they knew those lawns and they would spray them in the same pattern every time because they developed efficiency efficiency is good but it also improves your quality the more that you spray a pattern the more you understand what's going to hit you that there's a stump there that there's a low spot there that I got to avoid this here that I oversprayed on the fence early on there there's all these things things that you realize, the other thing you'll realize is that, hey, this is where I run out typically, so you want to go back. I mean, there's so many different things. You can make less trips to your fill station, so efficiency. So by spraying, Andrew, three products separately, I think it would take you up the learning curve of efficiency in your application a lot quicker as well. So I'm sure that's a lot more than you bargained for, but guys, that's why you listen here to the Lawns Across America podcast.